Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, it's time to finish up the work on peaches. I got the new radiator in. The one that I installed was defective and leaking. So anytime you're going to do work on a vehicle, I, I suggest you do the clean things first and work your way into the dirty things. So the first thing I'm going to do is fix the uh, little thing here, the sun visor. Second thing I'm going to do is check the switch. It, the driver's door switch doesn't want to roll down the uh, rear passenger window. So let me go ahead and dig into this sun visor. Somebody asked me a few days ago, how do you replace the light bulbs on these uh, sun visors? And uh, it's pretty simple process. So you have a sun visor. Let me show you. I take an accessory screwdriver, pry it into the light assembly, slide it across or work it work my way across to get the lens out once the lens is out you see those two fuse type light bulbs in there replace those light bulbs and set the uh, light cover back in place and snap it under the little lip that it has there and that's it so here's the light bulb it's a 12 uh, volt 1.2 watt now these sun visors sag i think mainly because people push them too far forward they're designed to hang down and go just a little bit forward but when people push them forward trying to get them to press against the uh, windshield i think that messes up the hinge in them or they just get old and worn and the hinge wears out. At any rate, when you try to hold them up, they fall down. They're quite expensive, so I try to find them at the junkyard. Normally, I think they're about $130 at the dealer. But what you need to do is, the A-pillar trim needs to come out. Then you take the two 10 millimeter bolts loose. Then you unplug the connector down there for the 70 series. The 850s doesn't have a plug, so sometimes I get those at the junkyard, and I splice them in. At any rate, if you have an 850 and it doesn't have the plug, the plug is actually down through the dash and comes up uh, behind the glove box down here. So the plug is really too far to reach. It's better if the plug was in the pillar, like on the 70 series cars. So if you have an 850 and you're going to cut the wires, you need to disconnect the battery before you cut the wires because cutting the wires, you'll likely short out your dome light situation. So don't do that. Once you got your pillar out, your two 10 millimeters loose, you pull this down, you, you wire in the replacement, you put the two 10 millimeter bolts in, and then you put your A pillar back in. So let's get started. First thing I do is take a small flat tip screwdriver, carefully pry the top of this out and remove it. It's got a little notch in there so you can get this uh, trim piece off. Next, your trim is secure by this little clip. You turn this clip 90 degrees, work it out of the uh, trim piece. And now you can pull your B pillar away from the wall. Don't pull it too far. You could crack it, especially on the 850s. You want to pull it away from the pillar far enough to get this trim piece out. To get this pillar trim pulled away from the pillar, you have to pull these clips in on front and back. After you have the clips pulled in, now you can pull this trim back away from the pillar. I have to do that with two hands. Okay, I have it pulled loose. Like I said, you only want to pull it far enough to get this trim piece out. Because if you pull it too far down 
out away from it, you could crack it somewhere going down the pillar. I actually used two hands and at the next pivot point, I put my hands in there, unclipped it, but you wanna make sure you don't cut yourself. Next, you gotta get this loose. So it looks like the rear one is over top of the forward one. So you can either work this one away from the uh, upper trim or you just work this from under it. And be careful working this trim out from the uh, car because you don't wanna break any of the clips. So I pull it in toward the other side of the car. Work your way slowly and down so you don't break uh, the A-pillar trim. They are fragile, they do break, try not to break it. So, I worked it from under the B-pillar trim. Now I'm working my way down, real careful not to break it, and I pull it up and away from the A-pillar. There's the plug to the uh, sun visor. I unplug it, I unthread all of the connections loose through these little things here. I'm going to remove those two 10 millimeter bolts with a small ratchet and then I'll pull that one down. Now these type just pull loose. This type here, you push them in and bend them over to get them open and just go all the way up the pillar so you can get those wires loose without breaking anything. Once you got your two 10 millimeters out, you just thread the wire through your, your roof liner. No big deal. Don't try to pull it down so far that you'll break it. Now thread the replacement one in. Manufacture date is actually encoded on these. So when you see them in the salvage yard, you should be able to figure out what date they were manufactured. This one looks like maybe 96 or 96 of the first month, January. Now this one is missing some kind of hinge pin from the uh, vanity and it's cracked so I'm going to try to remove this from the bad uh, sun visor if I can get it out I'll replace it into the other one to my knowledge these are simply glued into the uh, sun visor and they have some kind of clips in them so let me see if I can pry this vanity mirror out of this one and they do have wires connecting them on the back. That's how they light up. So if you're going to try to swap that over, try not to damage that, those wires. So far, I'm doing good with getting this mirror assembly out of this damaged uh, sun visor. The plastic tabs on the bottom of it are pressed in and held into this metal part of the sun visor. And then the two wires are actually soldered into the back of them. So I'll need to get a solder gun and um, unsolder these two connectors and then solder it, this uh, visor, this vanity onto the other sun visor. But on the one that I'm going to keep, I don't have to be as careful prying this uh, visor out of here because if I break those plastic tabs, it's no big deal. I'll just dig them out of the metal. When I pulled the mirror out of the replacement uh, visor, I realized that I could just guide these connectors out of the vanity. So I'm just going to do that and not deal with the solder. Now that I have the mirror, the vanity, out of the good visor, I'm going to straighten out these metal uh, connectors. Uh, securing points so that when I press the the replacement vanity in place it'll stay in place so I'm gonna straighten out all those metal tabs I have my light wiring hooked up I have my tabs straightened out now I'm going to press this vanity in place into this sun visor I hit all four points with the palm of my hand it appears to be in shape and good now I'm going to go ahead and thread the electrical connector through the hole in the visor, put this one in place, and bolt it up there. But I want to make sure that I don't crimp this wire. 
This is how that wire should be secured in there before you secure it to the ceiling. I have the visor bolted in place, the wire coming down through each little guide. I've reattached the plug connector. I'm ready to put the A-pillar trim back on. Now this trim has two slots down the bottom of it and those slots slide over these two connections. And then it has these posts here and those posts clip into these sockets in these locations. And then it has the little socket there, socket there, and it hooks over there. So let me slide this down over the hooks like it's supposed to be, secure it without breaking it, and then put this piece up here back together. I have everything back together the way it was. I hooked this trim piece on in here, make sure it slid down in the bottom, and pop it in place. We're all done. Now this switch will not roll that passenger window down, but it does pull it up. So I'm going to pull it out and tinker with it just a little bit and put it back, see if I can get it to roll that window down. The window rolls down and back up fine with the door switch, and it rolls up fine with the master control switch. So here's the master control rolling it up. Just has a problem getting it down. Okay, I pulled the switch out. I cleaned all the dust out of the contacts and now the switch functions all of the windows. Had to be careful with this thing here when I plugged it back together. I didn't have that right in the right position. I had to take it back apart. I just took another look at my coolant leak and it looks like my coolant leak may be coming out of my hose. So let me tighten that hose clamp a little bit and see if that stops. My coolant bottle was pretty much empty. When I start the car, I do not get a little coolant light. So I'm going to lift the bottle up and replace the sensor and see if that changes. I connected this old bottle. I started the car. The coolant low light came right on. So I'm going to pop these sensors out of the bottom of them, swap them over, see if that fixes my problem. If not, it's going to be the float inside the bottle. Not sure how I'm going to rectify that. I have the sensor replaced. Let's see if we get a low. We do not get a low coolant light, so it's not the sensor. It's the float in the bottle. Let me see if I can figure out how to clean that float out to get that float to go all the way down. Finally got enough sludge cleaned out of that bottle that my sensor now works. Well, it looks like my radiator leak was actually my hose clamp wasn't tight enough. So I tightened it up a few turns. It looks like the leak stopped. So I'm going uh, to replace the heater core, dry this area off, and test drive it, see if it leaks any. I was about to replace this heater core, but I see it was replaced in 08. It's got a manufacturer date here of January 25th, 2008. So I'm not going to replace this heater core and I'm going to take that out of my advertisement. When the car was on the test drive, I could feel it shifting. So I'm going to do a transmission drain. So this is the first drain. Very little bit of stuff on the uh, magnet and the fluid is not as bad as I've seen. But I'm going to go ahead and drain it anyway. Get it clean, cleaned out, and this is the first cycle on it. I got the bolt in and tight, and I got a little bit of a leak down here uh, in the rear main seal area, but this car's been sitting, had some fuel in the engine, so hopefully that'll dry up and stop. So I'm going to wash that down here shortly and start driving the car and see if that stops even after the PCV is done and stuff like that. So that's the texture and mix of that transmission fluid. It's not red, more brown than anything. So on the left is a new bottle. That's how much fluid's in there. And on the right, that's how much I got out of the transmission. So uh, I think that bottom line just below it is a perfect level for it. But I'll check it after I do the final fill up on it. Now let me get to the ABS module and get that replaced. 
there's the ABS module with tracks and without tracks for the two wheel drive vehicles 98 model all right I have the ABS module in let me see if I can service the AC find a cap for that thing and mush off I put about 30 miles on peaches today it runs pretty good the uh, engine cleaner did very well with getting those wheels clean and uh, everything's doing fine I found the source of the radiator leak I thought it was a bad radiator it turned out I didn't tighten one of the hoses down tight enough so all is going well with it and I'll tighten up a few minor things tomorrow if you feel that this information was useful please like it and share it with your social media friends you can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post you can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.